Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Yezer Electric Transformers and Drivers for the Rock. In this presentation, I'm going to cover a little bit about piezoelectricity and then talk about the power electronics related to it. It was discovered in 1880 by the brothers of Korea and have been used throughout the years for its uh, transducers for sonars, uh, for microphones, and also for various uh, resonators. Quartz is also a piezoelectric uh, element. Now the effect of piezoelectricity is actually a relationship or interaction between mechanical and electrical forces. If we stress an piezoelectric element and we have a electrodes uh, plated on it, we're going to see a voltage. And on the other hand, if we are going to expo expose this element to a voltage imposing on it, this will generate a stress within the element. So we can see it here without any interaction. And here there's a positive and negative uh, effect. Now, these are, of course, exaggerated. The movement of a piezoelectric uh, piece would be in the, in the nanometer or micrometer range. A uh, larger deviation could be achieved by stacking a number of these uh, in series. Now, if we have two elements like this and we um, drive one of them at a certain frequency, uh, this frequency can be picked up by the other element and generate a voltage in response. Now the piezoelectric transformer is in fact one piece in which we excite one side by a pair of electrodes and then pick up uh, the voltage which is the result of the fact that vibrations are generated or built up within this element and these vibrations cause a voltage to uh, appear at this uh, secondary side. So here we have it, it's a primary side, and this is a secondary side, and this is just one piece of piezoelectric material. Now the piezoelectric material vibrates, and it has a mechanical resonance, and then we are going to have uh, standing waves within it, and they can be of different kinds, like uh, longitudinal, uh, flexure, and many other uh, modes. Usually in piezoelectric transformer, uh, we are using one of the two modes. One is a half wavelength, that is the wavelength, and I'm talking about acoustic wavelength, acoustic speed um, wavelength, or a full wavelength within this uh, element. Another structure of a piezoelectric transformer, which is uh, very popular and useful in many applications, high voltage application, is the Rosen type uh, piezoelectric transformer. Now here we have these two electrodes on this side, but then we have the output on this side. Now what really happens here that we have a sort of a amplification of the vibration from here to this vibration here and as a result we're going to have sort of to speak a gain acoustic gain which is uh, fairly high and these have been used in um, for generate high voltage we'll talk about it a little bit later now you can actually improve this or increase the gain factor but by sandwiching a number of layers of piezoelectric on the primary and this is like increasing the number of turns uh, in a transformer okay so this is a rosen type trans uh, transformer with multi-layer uh, primary and as a result we're going to have a very high gain in order to model a piezoelectric transformer it's useful to use one set of units either mechanical or electrical and we prefer the electrical so being also of a mechanical nature uh, we would like to translate the dynamics the mechanical dynamics into a electrical uh, units and the classical way to do it is to translate a mass uh, to an inductor a resistor to a friction and the 
capacitor emulates the one over stiffness, which is compliance or flexibility, like the spring, how soft or rigid is the uh, spring nature of the element. And then velocity is current and force is uh, voltage. So that the element actually is a second order system. We have a, a capacitor here. This is a one over stiffness. We have the damping, which is the resistor. This is the capacitor. And we have the mass, which is the inductor. So this is actually a resonant network and it uh, can then uh, oscillate or, or be excited in the resonant frequency. Now this is for one mode of operation. Uh, there are many, many modes of operation and each mode will have its own uh, network to represent. So in the usual way, we are plating the piezoelectric uh, element with uh, metal for the electrodes. It can take, of course, uh, many shapes. And the equivalent circuit of the piezoelectric transformer looks in general like this. This is the mechanical part. This is the mass, uh, one over stiffness, uh, the damping. This represents the coupling between the electrical and mechanical uh, units or forces. And uh, it might have some gain to it. And this is the input side and this is the output side. Now these two capacitor are electrical capacitor. They actually represent the capacitance between these two plates. And now piezoelectric materials have fairly high uh, permeability uh, coefficient. And as a result, the capacitance is, I should say, unfortunately, fairly high. So we have a high capacitor here and a high uh, capacitance. Now, this is the, just another way. Here we have transformer, the output, the input capacitor, the output capacitor, the mechanical part. Now we usually prefer to represent this uh, transformation uh, ratio with two dependent source. These two dependent source are actually acting like a transformer. Uh, you have uh, a current coming out, which is the function of the current in and a voltage reflected from uh, the output. So this is actually a, a ideal transformer. The difference between the two is that if, for example, in a simulation you put a magnetic transformer, you have a short here to DC. Now, if you are rectifying the output, you'll have DC here, and with the transformer, e magnetic transformer, you'll have a short. So it is preferable to use uh, this type of a representation of this uh, uh, ratio between input and output. Now, this also will transfer DC, but it will be blocked here. So you can have DC here, it will be transferred and blocked here, so it will not be shorted right here, and DC will be shorted through the uh, secondary winding. Now, the way to analyze uh, the circuit is, of course, uh, to reflect it, say, to the input, uh, this is reflected load, uh, this is the output capacitor, and to ease actually uh, the analysis, we can replace this parallel combination by an equivalent circuit, which is a series combination. Now this is strictly correct for one frequency. For one given frequency, you can convert a parallel RC to a serial RC. As you can see, the conversion uh, equation do have in it frequency. Uh, but since we are walking around a specific frequency, this is very useful because we are really around one particular frequency. And this then, of course, makes the analysis very, very simple. Now, here is the response of a typical uh, transformer. Uh, here are the, say it's, a, it's a small transformer, uh, typical uh, parameters. Uh, resonant capacitance, uh, inductance, friction, the losses, the turns ratio, and the input and output capacitance. As you can see, in this particular case, the input capacitance is large, the output is low. This is uh, probably a Rosen type. 
I don't remember. It looks like that because this is the type of uh, relationship you get with the Rosen type that you have a low capacitance at the output. Now the resonant frequency here is about 66 kilohertz. It is important to realize that one of the unique nature of the piezoelectric transformer is that the Q, the quality factor, is very high. A quality factor is defined as the square root of uh, L over C over R. And if I'll plug in these numbers, I'm getting something like 470. So a quality factor of around 1,000 is typical uh, for, of course, this is for the unloaded element, very typical for the piezoelectric transformers. Now what we see here, we see here again, and we see the uh, range of frequencies uh, here. It is like uh, from 66 to 68. This is like 2 kilohertz. We need the bandwidth here. 2 kilohertz out of the uh, 60 or 70 kilohertz. Now, it was found actually in our group by the late Professor Ivensky that you can describe the transfer function of a transformer in a very generic way that holds for any transformer. And let me just define the parameters. These are normalized parameters. K21 is the voltage transfer function. P is the output available per unit. This is per V in square. This is the efficiency. And Q is actually representing the load. This is the load time, uh, and then these are the parameters of the uh, piezoelectric transformer. So this represents the load, this is the efficiency, this is the normalized output power, and this is the voltage ratio. And here is uh, what we got. Here is, this axis is Q, so this is related to the load. This is like the resistor that you load it. The resistor is getting larger and larger here. And there are a number of curves here, actually three. Let's start with this one. This is the voltage transfer ratio. So as you increase the resistor, you're getting higher and higher and higher voltages. Okay, so this is the, I am sorry, this is the uh, voltage transfer ratio. Let's move now to the uh, output power. This is the normalized output power. And as it turns out, it has two ups to it, um, one here and one here. And there is a minimum in between. And lo and behold, the minimum is where you have maximum efficiency. This is really uh, found in many other systems that you get the highest frequency at the minimum power transfer. So that's life. Uh, if you like to have very high efficiency, then the power level that you can transfer will be relatively low. Uh, you can get a higher output power, but the frequency will be, I mean, the efficiency will be lower. Well, that's the way it is. Experimental measurements uh, show that the theory holds very nicely, and this is just some experimental point, just to show that you're getting exactly what you expect. Now I'm turning to the question of driving a piezoelectric transformer. We distinguish between hard switching and soft switching. Hard switching is when you have an overlap between the current and voltage of the switch, of the switcher. And since you have an overlap, you have this uh, product between these two and there is a power loss. So you, ha you might have it at a turn on and a turn off. Now, soft switching means that um, you have a sort of a distance between these two or minimum overlap, minimum overlap. And uh, this is, of course, uh, desirable at high frequency because uh, an overlap or will cause uh, switching losses, which are proportional, by the way, to the switching frequency because the higher the frequency, the more times per second you have this phenomenon going on. So you like to have soft switching. So when you drive a transformer, you would like uh, to have soft switching. Now it can be shown, and I'm not, not going into it, that in order to get zero voltage switching, 
you like the current to lag after the voltage. That is, you like the input to look inducted. Okay? So it is found that some piezoelectric elements, uh, let me start with this one, this one, have at a certain region of frequency, this is frequency here, an inductive nature. Okay? So this will be in here like in many other resonance uh, circuits at the frequency higher than the resonance, okay? So this will be inductive, the uh, phase will be lagging, and you can achieve here zero voltage switching without anything. That is, you don't need, you just drive the element and you get the soft switching. However, not all piezoelectric transformers do have this feature, and some of them really don't reach into the uh, inductive region. So therefore you cannot get soft switching with this type of element. It has to do with the structure of the element. So we can have here uh, hard soft switching and if we have the situation of uh, not being able to get soft switching we need something uh, to in between call it the matching network in order to provide the soft switching. Here is the soft switching. You see that you have the voltage of the transistor and the current, which are minimum overlap. So how can you do it? Well, one simple way is to put a serious inductor. This is very, very typical, classical way of achieving soft switching with piezoelectric transformer. And here is an example uh, we have various, this is for a particular uh, transformer, of course. Uh, we have various inductors, and I'm looking now at the phase. This is the phase, and this is zero. So this region here is inductive. So you'll get, in all these cases, uh, soft switching because uh, the current is lagging after the voltage of the transistor. A better way is actually to use a clamp, uh, clamp diodes. Uh, in this case, you are assured of very good soft switching, but at the expense of a little bit more current through the inductor because you have current still flowing when um, it is clamped. Uh, so you have sort of circulating current here and here. But in this case, you have very, very, very nice waveform. Here is the uh, input voltage to the uh, piezoelectric transformer. This is the clamped voltage. This is the inductor current. Uh, this is the output voltage. And this is the uh, commutation of the half bridge. And uh, you can see sort of a indicative of a nice zero voltage switching. Okay, let me now move to the uh, output side of a piezoelectric transformer in case you need the DC output. Uh, we can use a voltage doubler, sort of a half bridge configuration. It's a doubler because during the negative uh, cycle here, the negative voltage, this uh, diode conducts and actually the internal capacitor is being charged and then during the positive phase, this charge voltage is added to the sinusoidal wave and uh, fed to the output. Or we can use a, a full bridge um, rectifier uh, with uh, four diodes. And here is a typical, uh, typical waveform of, say, a half or doubler. Uh, we see the output is clamped to zero, and then it's clamped to the output side. This is the internal current within the PS. This is something you cannot measure. And this is the output current when the voltage, when the current reaches this value. Then here uh, we start to see the current. This is this part of the current which dies out, goes to zero. Now, in high voltage application, we use the Rosen type. 
and the high voltage uh, range of application is for ionizers, uh, ozone generators, sparkets, and backlight. Uh, it was very popular when a fluorescent lamps, a tiny fluorescent lamp, were used for backlight for monitors. Nowadays, of course, LED are used, so uh, this area of application is actually dying out. Now, in this uh, high voltage case, uh, we use a piezo electric transformer of the Rosen type. Now, the advantage, not only that it can produce high voltage, but also that this element has very high uh, insulation capabilities because it is a ceramic, it's a non-conductive element. So the problem of isolation, uh, insulation um, associated with high voltage transformer is of less problematic here. So what we have here, just a half bridge, uh, and again, this clamp uh, arrangement, these soften the commutation and you get here a very high voltage. And here is a typical uh, output experimental actually compared to theoretical curve. Now this happens here if you don't adjust the frequency as you change the load. This is a function of the load, okay? High voltage load uh, in the MAGO uh, range. Now if you adjust the frequency as you increase the load, you get very high uh, voltages, and here we get uh, up to 5,000, 6,000 volts. Now the uh, squares here are experimental points, and uh, the uh, broken line is actually the theoretical prediction. So th these are uh, pretty good. So in order to get the maximum uh, output, you do have uh, to tune the frequency uh, to whatever resonant frequency you are at with a given load. Now, how can you do that? Uh, one way uh, to do is to lock to the resonant current, okay? So as to see what's the resonant current and then to have a phase lock loop uh, to lock to it. Now, you cannot get into the piezo to get this current. In fact, this is not the current. Uh, this is the mechanical part. But this diode here as uh, the output, this is negative output, so this just shown in the positive direction. So when this current is actually clamped into the diode, you in fact see this current. And here it is. As the diode is conducting, you see part of this uh, equivalent current uh, of the piezo. So you can lock to this point here which uh, is the end of this cycle. And this is uh, what was done here. Here is the current of the diode. It is measured by just two diodes to clamp the value. And there is a uh, phase lock loop here, which is uh, then changing the frequency as to lock uh, to this current, which is in fact the current within, I mean, the mechanical vibration of the PS. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it uh, interesting and it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.